All right, welcome back. It is still today's business. Now, latest figures as released by the large Bureau of statistics put uh, the current inflation figure at 31.7%. Uh, a sharp departure from uh, the initial figure of 29.7%. Uh, uh, On the show today, we'll be looking at um, the implication of these developments on the purchasing power of Nigerians and how government can begin to alleviate the, uh, the implications on the Nigeria. So let's join uh, uh, Mukhtar Mohamed. Mukhtar Mohamed joins us via Zoom. Uh, so good to have you on today's business, Mukhtar. Thank you, David. My pleasure. Fantastic, Mukhtar. So good to have you join us uh, to discuss inflation figures. Uh, Mukhtar is the MD CEO of Finance with Mukhtar and them is, a, is an economist. Mukhtar, 31.7% is what um, the NBS had released. First and foremost, uh, Mukhtar, uh, is this figure, do you think this figure is a reflection of where we are in terms of um, consumer price index? Well, uh, David, when you talk about consumer price index, that's a different ball game entirely. Um, if it is where we are, I don't think it is where we are. You just need to go to the market. You realize that these um, figures don't go up by just one point something percent. Um, a friend of mine was making an analogy of recently. Said, if you buy something, maybe you're supposed to buy like three. You forgot to, you bought only two. And you decide to just turn back by 10, get back the price has gone up by almost 50 percent. So um, I don't think it's a true reflection of what Nigerians are going through. But again, um, is the overall statistic, and uh, they have a way they collate this data. So we could uh, we could not but agree with them. As a stand, even as a stand, based on their own, is still very very bad because we've entered 31, and we don't see any. Uh, we, there's no hope that it is going to it's going to be a slowdown anytime soon. So definitely, uh, we'll continue to wage the war on inflation, and the CBM need to come up with their own strategy on how to this. All right, um, fantastic, uh, Mukhtar, fantastic. But then um, let's look at uh, the, the components of, um, of the figures. Uh, uh, food inflation contributed about 35% to uh, the entire figures. I don't know, did you see this coming? Yes, I saw it coming, David. That's why I'm saying that when you buy something, you go back. Now, food inflation in Nigeria is caused by a lot of factors. Now, at this present moment, it's caused by cost of production, um, um, cost of transportation, and also um, security challenges. At three, Mungo's have a uh, um, situation that, that in um, this space of the Nigeria economic strategy, the farmer. So uh, I'm not surprised it's there. I'm, I'm even surprised that it's lower, so at 35%. I thought we would be doing something up to like 50 to 60 percent in terms of food inflation and you know what i keep saying is that the irony of it all is that in the rural area they, that those inflation figures are so going well, up so is it uh, tax for the government to be able to begin to think how they will handle it they, they bring, bring it rolling out like lagos state rolling out some markets that people need to go and buy something for free um well it is not uh, uh um it's not going to be everybody that will, will be able to go there with one condition or the other so Government should devise all that means whereby they can impact the life of the people. Even if you are not subsidizing food, they are subsidizing agriculture. If you are not subsidizing agriculture, you are subsidizing, you are not subsidizing means of transportation. You must subsidize something that will have an overall effect on the generality of Nigeria rather than subsidize one item that seems to be beneficiary to the rich. Mm, that, 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 that is a sharp departure because I had, I had someone um, speak to me this earlier today who was very, very emphatic that government should reverse, should reverse um, uh, uh, the removal of fuel subsidy as well as um, their position on the floating of the Naira. Uh, do you think if these two, uh, these two contributions are, are dealt with, uh, do, you, do you foresee uh, a drastic um, impact on the inflationary pressures that Nigerians are facing at the moment? No, David, it will not happen because if you go by the data, I, I, I listened to your news, you're talking about crude oil prices have increased by 4% in, in the UK. The, the, when you talked about deregulation, that means 
Once there's a price increment, it's supposed to be all about. Then they also see price increment in refined petroleum products, especially when you're importing it from the outside of the country. So now we've been made to understand that we are paying subsidy. Maybe we don't know how much of subsidy we are paying. Government will need to come out clear on that. But obviously, the price of uh, gas has gone up, and so we are definitely paying a subsidy. For the floating of the Naira, like I said, it was a very good uh, policy, but we did not have the world out. Um, David, let me give you an example. The Egyptian uh, Egyptians were asked to float their currency. They just did it, which is okay. But what they did was to have the water. They had an agreement with World Bank, not just telling us to float our currency. You need to come up with a plan for us. Yeah, you need to be part of it because we know that if we float our currency, we may have challenges. And that could drive up inflation. That could create a big gap also in our exchange system. So the third what they did was to make sure that the, the, the IMF invested about eight billion in terms of liquidity. And at the very first day that this currency was devalued, the currency went up by 50%. Then the second day it has gone down by 30%. And then they bring liquidity. So you could see the strategy there. Even up to this moment, the European Union also are now beginning to think that the world will also help EJ with funds because they know that no central bank in the world will leave your currency for market forces. So is that strategy okay? Is fruit of Nigeria is okay? Yes, it's okay because it should be a means of attracting investors to Nigeria. And we have been seeing those investors trickling in. But again, you must not allow that gap to be as wide as it is now. That is the challenge that the government, you know, like I said in your program, it was for the first time we saw the Official exchange rate trying to catch up with the with the with with the already overvalued parallel market rate. So I, I don't think floating on another removal subsidy was going to reduce the price. If we do remove our subsidy today, the NMPC can decide that they are not importing fuel again because they don't have the resources, and then we'll begin a very very big crisis. Well, we have been hit on virtually every every side of the economy. Uh, Mukhtar, what can we do at the moment? Or before, before what, what we can do, I'm looking at, this is the figures for February of 2024. Are you hoping that this could change? Uh, I mean, when you look at the realities in the month of, month of March, uh, do, do you think uh, the figures uh, might just go up again, or we, we are trying to tame. Uh, any effort in taming uh, this inflation? You saw NPR uh, increase uh, uh, at the last um, MPC meeting, e even though, yes, you probably say that the effect would not have been felt so soon. Probably be expected to, see, to feel the effect of the, um, the rise on NPR maybe from the month of March or April. But does that tell me that um, we just might exp experience a spiral in inflation by the next figure? The next month, David, yeah. I, I, I don't expect the figures to go down immediately, like you said, drastically. But I'm hopefully, like I said, in the second quarter, we'll see a slowdown, we'll begin to see the numbers coming down, especially when the federal government starts having effects and um, people are able to assess efforts and bring in some of the goods into the country to compete with Nigerian goods, then we could begin to see those rates come down. But as it stands now, um, I don't see anything bringing it down, but Again, another thing that will bring it down is the portal refinery that is coming to stream. And they don't down the refinery that will come any moment from now. So when those come in, those will bring down the energy costs in terms of uh, yeah, they will buy food oil at international price, but again, they are going to sell for locals and they're going to knock off all the charges that we normally normally have. So that could also bring down the cost of where bring down the cost of for, for, uh, um, transportation, and that will be generally and um, bring down uh, 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 inflationary pressure from for Nigeria. So I, I have the opinion that, but for now, I think uh, the Siberian have really have a lot of, in their hands. And one of those things is to be able to tackle this inflationary pressure and bring it down using all available monetary policy tools. With all that you have seen so far, Mokhtar, are we in the right direction? Are we winning this fight against uh, spiraling inflation? with all that you've seen in terms of government attention, the SCBN's attention. David, I don't think so, because what we are doing, we are not looking at the peculiarity of our own economy and then begin to come up policies on how to address this um, situation. 
We started this with Ike with the Americans, with the UK, with the France government. Today, inflation has drastically reduced in those places. And yet, here we are, ours is getting up. And so it's a copy and paste thing that we are doing. We need to begin to look at an internal way to solve our economic problem, especially inflation. What is driving that inflation? What can we do nationally to bring it down before we begin to think of globally? So for me, I think um, we're not there, you know, yeah, we're, we're, I, don't, I don't see us hitting it in the shortest possible time, uh, but we would definitely hit it. But again, we must come up with the right strategy to be able to hit it. So I have to let you go, but before then, how would Nigerians begin to understand the impact of these rising inflation? What should they be looking out for uh, to tell them that um, this is as a result of inflationary pressure that the economy has been faced with? It's simple. When you go to the market, some things have gone up. <laughs> so that the major means because again, it's food stocks that have been going up. So it definitely, you continue to witness um, hike in a lot of um, activities that have been done by the current uh, by the by, by, um, by the common man. And even now, uh, house rent also is going up in places like Lagos. You can see that in that in that report also. So definitely, uh, um, it, it, it's a tough time for Nigeria. But again, one or two advice: if you don't have to go, don't go. If you don't have to to eat outside, you want to eat inside, eat inside. It's a lot of cut, cut and paste, cut and paste, little, little um, changes here and there that you begin to see and you have to live your life.